QuickBooks Desktop 2023 Pay Bill Form. Let's do it within two it's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation, going through the setup process we go through every time, maximizing the homepage to the gray area. In the view dropdown, we've got the hide icon bar and open windows list checked off, open windows open on the left hand side. Reports dropdown, company and financial, opening up that PNL profit and loss, changing the range in 010123 to 123. Customize the report, fonts and numbers, changing the font up to 14. Okay, yes please, and okay. Let's open up the other one, going to the reports dropdown, company and financial, this time the balance sheet. And we're gonna customize it first, do the change in ranging, 010123. That's a three, two, three, 12, 31, two, three. And then fonts to the numbers, to the change in the font, to the 14, to the okay, to the yes, to the okay. That's the setup process we do every time. We're going back to the home page now. This time we're gonna be entering a pay bill form. Before we do so, however, let's just give a recap of some multiple different ways or formats we might pay off our vendors. Last time we looked at the check form. The check form is the default form that decreases the checking account. We entered some check forms last time, imagining we're paying things like the utility bill, the phone bill, and so on and so forth. Note that some of these other forms, such as the pay bill form, the sales tax form, the pay liabilities form, the, the pay employees form even, are going to be types of check forms because they're going to be forms that are decreasing the checking account. However, they are check forms that are specific to a specific cycle and therefore have something a little bit different to them. The pay bill forms will look like a check form, but the other side will always be decreasing the accounts payable. So note when you're using the right check form directly, you might do this for multiple different scenarios. You might have pre-printed checks with the check numbers on them already that you have to put into the actual printer. And when you enter the checks into the system, you're gonna print them out on those pre-printed checks. You also might use the check form if you're just handwriting checks and you're trying to mirror what you're putting in place as you write the checks in the system or you might use the check forms to record electronic transfers. And so when you do an electronic transfer, you're still decreasing the checking account. QuickBooks sees that as the check form, although you will not have a check number for it in that case. You also might use bank feeds. On the bank feeds, they could work quite well if you are in a situation where you're doing electronic transfers. And because there's a lot lower of a time frame between when you actually uh, do the transfer and when it clears the bank, the bank feeds can be a good tool. Remembering, however, that's a step away from a full service accounting system because usually you'll enter the transaction before uh, you before it clears the bank. So even if using bank feeds, if you were doing a full service system, you would enter the transaction as you make the transaction and then double check that it cleared with the bank feeds or bank reconciliation. Or you could do the easier thing which would be just let the check clear and then record it with the bank feeds. We have a whole nother course or section on bank feeds, so we're not gonna go into that in a lot more detail here. You can also enter this information directly into the register if it was just a check form and not one of these kind of special forms, a special check form, and that might be a little bit faster if you've got multiple things to be entering into the register. Now, the other thing you can do, and we'll focus more on this when we enter things like the utility bill and the phone bill next time, is to enter the bill first and then sort the bills and pay the bills. 
this will be more and more of a, a system that's going to be necessary as the company gets larger because oftentimes when a company gets larger the, the cash management strategies are going to be more and more important in other words you're going to want to pay pay out as late as possible and that doesn't make a big difference if you don't have a whole lot of transactions if you only have a few transactions meaning for example if you got your utility bill today for last month's utility expenses there's not much big difference if you have the cash flow to pay it today versus paying it you know 20 to 25 days from now on the due date uh, but if you have like thousands of transactions that are like that then it becomes more and more significant to pay them as late as possible and that's when you get it becomes more significant to hire someone to manage your your payables to enter the bill when you get the bill because i would like to enter the bill close to the point in time when i actually had the expense that happened meaning when i get the utility bill it's for last month's activities if i put the utility bill in as soon as i get it i'm recording the expense closer to the point in time that i actually consumed the electricity or whatever uh, so as opposed to waiting and paying it at a later time which means uh then then i'm going to be paying it uh, then I'll enter the transaction or the expense at a later point if I pay it at the last minute uh, of, of the pay period. So that means we're going to enter the bills in here and then we need to sort the bills that have been entered. Multiple ways we could sort the bills. We could go into the vendor center here and we can take a look and see our information by vendor. We could see the drop down. We could see just uh, the, the vendor with balances and see who we owe money to in that fashion we can go to transactions we can go to bills and see the bills that are all bills or open bills now here we're focusing mainly on those transactions in the first month that are non accrual transactions and entering a bill is an accrual transaction accounts payable tracking the accounts payable is an accrual transaction but we have this one bill in place that we'll use as an example which we put in place when we first started the account because we had a balance in accounts payable so if i go to the balance sheet we've got the accounts payable here of the fifteen thousand, and we're going to basically pay that off with the pay bill form lowering the accounts payable lowering cash and lowering the vendor related to it for the sub ledger which in this case is epiphone so let's do that here we'll go to the home page we'll go to the pay bill and so so i've got the do on or before which will help me to sort these items we've got the show all bills and then you can have different filtering options if you wanted to filter the bills this is another way that you could sort if you had a whole lot of bills obviously we only have the one down here so it's fairly straightforward if i if i uh, check this off uh this field we're gonna hold on a second we're gonna check this all vendors okay now if i if i uh, check this off that's going to be the bill that will be applied if there were multiple bills we can then check off multiple bills if we had an amount that we're going to be that we're going to pay that is less than the full amount then i can enter some other amount here and that would leave a, an outstanding balance that would still be uh, needed to be paid to that vendor we can clear everything down here we can go to the actual bill by selecting this item this is the selected bill that we're now paying off this is a useful tool because the bill you'll note is where we can see the expense that was hit in this case it went to uncategorized uh, expense because it was a beginning balance transaction but that's kind of important because when you see the actual check that was written the check is not going to tell you the expense account it's just going to be decreasing the accounts payable you got to go back to when we entered the bill to see the bill also just realize just from a terminology standpoint that when i get a bill from a customer the bill from the customer might say invoice on it because to them to the utility company for example they're invoicing us the bill for quickbooks means that we're entering a form that's going to increase the accounts payable so if we got a physical paper bill or an email bill or whatever from the utility company that doesn't mean i have to enter the bill into the system with a bill form we might just pay the bill with a right check so we might write a check to pay the paper bill in other words the terminology of the bill that we get from the customer is slightly different than the terminology of the form that we're going to enter into quickbooks a bill form to us means that's something that's going to increase the accounts payable account 
an invoice form to us means that it's going to increase the accounts receivable account. But if you're talking about the other side of the table, these, these words can get confusing because obviously from the utilities company's standpoint, if they were using QuickBooks, they would be entering uh, an invoice when they're billing us, right? So you got to think about which direction you're talking about. And these, these terms are a little bit, uh, can be a little bit confusing in that way. Let's go back to the pay bills. So there is that we've got, we could, if there's any discounts or set credits, we've got the options here. We have the uh, pay date down below. So let's check this off pay date. And I'm going to select a check form. So I'm going to say a check form. And I'm going to say the pay date is going to be 012623. And then if we had multiple checks that we're going to print, this is another great tool for the pay bills because it can make it a little bit easier to sort the checks that you want to print. And then if you have the pre-printed checks, you can put them into the printer and print them. Now, if you don't have any checks because you're, you're recording electronic transfers or something like that, then you can say assign the check numbers or if you're actually physically writing checks and you're just entering this into the system to mirror the checks that you're writing, you can assign the checks. If I hit the drop down here, it's coming out of the checking account. That's the default. That would, of course, be the standard. This will, in essence, be check forms decreasing the checking account, but the other side will be going to accounts payable as opposed to an expense account. Let's pay the bill and check it out. I'm not going to assign a check number because I'm going to assume it's like, well, do I need to? Let's assign. Let's let's let let me assign the check number. Let QuickBooks assign the. I'm going to let QuickBooks assign the check number and it'll give an automatic check number for the next check number that's going to be in line. If I don't have a check number, then I can say, you know, other or not put a number in it and automatically assign it if it's reflecting an electronic transfer or something like that. Okay, so it assigned check 1011 to it. That makes sense. So I'm going to say, okay, done. And you can see that in the register. If I go to lists, chart of accounts and double click on the register, so now you can see it assigned it here. You can see it's now a check, uh, but it's a special bill payment form. It still looks like a check, right? But it's different on the bottom. So I'm going to then let's check that out in our let's check out the check in the balance sheet. Let's check the check out. Check it. Check. This chick is checking the check. OK, OK. So here we have it. We got the pay payment. So we've got these normal looking checks. This is still a check going into it but the bottom of it now is going to accounts payable and then if i want to see what was actually purchased i would have to go to the related bill so i'm going to close this back out and then close this back out the other side is going into accounts payable which is no longer here because it's at zero so if i customize up top and go to the advanced and i want to see active items to see that zero item so i can drill down using the zoom there's the accounts payable if i double click on it there's the pay bill if i close that out i can look at the sub ledger now by reports drop down vendors and payables i can look at the vendor balance detail and so there's epiphone where we have the bill then the bill was paid that's the kind of detail we would expect to see Closing that out, I can also see that in the vendor center where we have the transactions, the bill, no more open bills. Here's all the bills. And if I went to the vendors tab and checked out our vendors, I want to see vendors, all vendors. And the one we just paid was uh, Epiphone. So here's the transaction details for Epiphone. There's the pay bill and there is the bill. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to our reports drop down and just check our numbers with the trial balance, the trustee TB010123 to 123123. Customize it, fonts and numbers it, font change it. Let's bring it up to 16, maximizing the font for the people with bad eyes like me, got least bad. So then we can check these out. And if they don't tie out, then try changing the date and then you could drill down and make any changes you need to at the end of the month of data input we'll do a transaction detail report which could help us further hone down any discrepancies